Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in the north of Lebanon in a small village that's known for a dish called kibbe. Now kibbe is, it's a dish known throughout the Levant, especially in Lebanon and Syria, of minced meat and bulgar wheat. Uh, and before coming to Lebanon, all I really knew was like one type of kibbe, but in fact there are many different types of kibbe prepared in many different ways. And so today we have a very special opportunity. Camel has arranged with one of his friends to prepare for us a full kibbe spread of dishes, different varieties, types of kibbe. I'm very excited to see the entire process and I'm going to show everything with you in this video. My favorite time in the afternoon, oh it's about to spill, is afternoon coffee time, especially when I'm at home editing videos. Before getting started with the main video, I wanna say a big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Uh, it's a service that I use personally, especially when I travel because I spend so much time on the internet. Okay, so a VPN, uh, it stands for a virtual private network. When you connect, it encrypts your data, and by the way, NordVPN has a military grade encryption so that you can browse the internet securely. And then the easiest thing to do is just click quick connect. One of the things that I really like about NordVPN is that there's thousands of servers and over 61 different countries that you can choose from, so you can always connect to a different location. On a completely personal level, using NordVPN is extremely important to me because I'm constantly traveling, I'm often using public Wi-Fi, and often actually accessing things like my bank and making bookings and so keeping my information safe and secure is very important. And additionally, I've traveled to some countries like China and the Middle East where there are certain restrictions and blocks on internet, like social media especially. And so using NordVPN and then being able to choose a server in a different destination in a different country gives me global internet access. Also quickly to mention about Article 13, which was just passed in the EU, uh, which is gonna introduce more filters and more restrictions on both uploading content as well as viewing content um, on many of the social media sites, YouTube, Facebook, so using NordVPN allows you to connect to a server in a different location. And finally, you can get 75% off a three-year plan at nordvpn.com slash markweens. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.99 per month, and you can use code markweens to get an extra month of Nord for free. Once again, that's nordvpn.com slash markweens, and use promo code markweens. Thanks again to NordVPN, and let's get back to the food video. This location, this restaurant, first of all, is just spectacular. These trees, this entire courtyard is just fully shaded by huge trees, huge leafy trees, right next to a rushing river. You hear the sound of the water, you're sitting in the shade, the fresh air. This village specifically is known for kibbeh throughout Lebanon. Uh, many say this is where the best kibbeh comes from. beverage that I can, could continuously drink throughout the entire day, non-stop. At the restaurant though, you, you typically serve just all types of Lebanese yeah. food? All types of meze? Yeah. Okay, but specializing in kibbeh. So we try to crumble it as much as possible. If there's one thing I have learned so far being in Lebanon, is that there's always food before food. Now I'm smiling. The mezes, the different dishes, the vegetables. So we're enjoying a little breakfast and coffee before getting into the kibbeh. Fell in love with the Lebanese bread and oh, yeah. uh, for good reason. This and here's one for me and one for you. Okay, so with the crispy Lebanese bread, the shanklish mixed with tomatoes, green onions, and olive oil. And you kind of get like that, it looks kind of like that cottage, crumbly cottage cheesy texture. I may just follow it up. Oh, yeah. With follow it. Oh, thank you. Camel. And tomato. Follow it. <laughs> There's always a chaser in Lebanon as well. And for this chanclish, it should be mint and tomato. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, that mint. Like it's mild but strong at the same time. I'm going to chase the chanclish with a tomato as well. Mm. The juiciest tomatoes. Look at the hummus, look at the labne. There is something really, really wrong with these two dishes that we need to fix. What is it? 
Aha! There you go. <laughs> Immediately, no hesitation. You're a local now. Also, if I can say it, okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, it's time for a hummus. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that hummus is amazing. Mm. It tastes the lemon in it, right? More than other yeah, hummus is amazing. Yeah. For me, I think it's so good because of the lemon bite in there. You can taste the lemon in it. Like, for the eggs and the, we just got a piece of manoushe, which is bread topped in za'atar. More food just always appears when you're in Lebanon. I think I'm gonna put the egg. I'm gonna set the egg right on top of that. Look at that, za'atar. The lemony zest, the thyme in there, the sesame seeds. Mm. Um, I just have to add some hummus to this. Okay, they're calling me now, it is time. But they are calling me now. It's time to start on the kibbeh. Yes. This is awesome. Traditional stone mortar for the kibbeh. It's very traditional. So back in the days, uh, whenever someone wanted to marry a girl from town, the challenge to test whether the guy was strong enough was to carry the whole thing with one hand, one arm, just above his head and put it back. The bogar? Okay. Keep it fresh. This is something that's not done very often anymore, but this is the traditional way to make kibbeh, to pound the meat using a, it's a really huge, like an entire stone mortar, and like a, it's like a mallet, very thick pestle. It's a very, very fine mince, this time of beef. And then the other mixture ingredient is cracked bulgar wheat, which is also mixed with a variety of, I think about seven different spices, they said. So she said seven spices and, seven and salt. That's it's called the allspice mix. Allspice mix. Okay, it's kind of like, it's kind of cinnamony though, like There's generally, generally, right? These like tendons and stuff, when they're pounding, you see a white string, you just pull it out, as opposed to the thin blender just mixes it in. So you're pounding, the you're pressing the flavor. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's uh, traditional. You can tell her experience. I guarantee she makes that look way easier than it is. That's fat? Yes. No, that's shahmi. Shahmi? Shahmi or lahmi. Okay. That's the fat. That deserves a... I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> that deserves an ovation for sure. You do not get that skill overnight. She did it so fast. So she took, she made two of them. Uh, then all of a sudden she took a couple spoons of the beef, pure beef fat, put it into the center of one, then put them both together, both bowl shapes of the dome shaped half domes together into a, into a making a full sphere of meat and fat. That is the most perfect ball of meat you will ever see. It's like, it's perfect, it's symmetrical. It's, and that's like just straight minced meat and bulgar with fat in the center. One we're taking to the traditional uh, bakery. Ah, oh, okay. In the, in the city, in the town. Is that Zaytun? Oh. Okay. She's moving on to the next kibbeh, and she added more water so to give it a more, I guess a less, less thick consistency. And she's about to put it into this giant pan full of olive oil. Mark, olive oil is sacred in this part of town. So, sacred. Yeah. And I, I immediately noticed the olive trees. The one from Zgharta, uh, Ferial Boutique. That is a huge base of meat. So now patterns need to be applied. You can see how even it is, the entire thing, just from her experience. Yes. 
ملي لها الدونتيلي تبعها هي بيعملوها مشان تستوي من قلبها كده من قلبها بصوت الزيت على قلبها عرفت كيف وكمان وقتها تتقطع They said that's both for art for design and that's like their design and then also for function for cooking so that everything is even so the olive oil probably oozes up I can already like imagine the oozing olive oil and meat juices and fats Ah, كمان بعد بتكون كبينية وين بتكون تاكلوها انتو Ah, okay Wow. Now she's going to demonstrate, show us the raw version. It's just a totally new experience for me. I've never, I mean, I, I know so little about kibbe other than like the, I think it's the little football shaped fried ones that I've had at Lebanese restaurants. But this is a whole different perspective. It's such, I, I can already tell, I know that this is the, kibbe is the king of dishes uh, in Lebanon, especially in this village. For that big pizza pan, meat spread at the bottom. Uh, we're going to go to a traditional bakery so they can bake it in a traditional Lebanese, that's the way it's cooked, going actually to a traditional bakery to, to do that. I can see it in the back. I can see it in the back. Yeah. <laughs> we've, got a lot of, we've got a lot of responsibility, thanks. Yes, yes, I do. I'm holding the prized handmade with love. <laughs> And care. With history, look at that. Look at that the, shimmer. The oil. No, no. Look at the oil. How? <laughs> oh yeah. Look, it's it's sprouting from that little hole. Back in the days, uh, the bakeries used to do all the bread in the morning, and then at noon, all the women would come here with the tra trays of kibbe ah. to bake them because they used to have no ovens at home. So all the kibbe in town used to be baked in that bakery. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, and we have Kala after. Kala for Precious Kala. cargo. I'm just enjoying, it's like waves of olive oil. That just <laughs> Meat and olive oil. <laughs> yes. In my face. <laughs> <laughs> Food has never been so much fun. Oh, it's right there. There's, there's a kibbe inside. <laughs> this is one of those days where the food excitement is at an all-time high. I'm shivering. I'm so excited. <coughs> we made this. I want the song. Here comes the ride. Hello. Oh, directly from the van into the oven. <laughs> you know, fourth generation. Fourth generation bakery. Amazing. The hundred. How many years? A hundred and. 120 years old the, the oven, fourth generation bakery. So like generations have grown up putting their kibbe into this oven. And even somebody beat us to the oven today. There's, there's another kibbe already in the oven. And if you could see that, the like oils are just sloshing, the olive oil and the meat juices are just sloshing around in that pan. Uh, but it is a tradition that people would bring their pan of kibbe, especially on Sunday when you have to have kibbe in this village, to the local baker. What a beautiful tradition. I cannot even believe it. This is gorgeous. This is, it's gonna be so incredibly good. The oven is over 800 degrees Celsius in there, so it's extremely, extremely hot. That cooks, the whole kibbe is gonna cook in about uh, 15 minutes and like, you almost like dehydrate. Oh, it's ready. Yes, it's already done. Oh, be careful. Kamel is asking me to uh, say some poetry. <laughs> oh, that aroma. With cardboard, it's time to carry the pan. Thank you very much. Shukran, shukran. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Amazing. Beautiful. Now it's uh, the time for the taste. After this, have it is. It is. <laughs> it is time. Okay, you are welcome. Oh, that's the greatest. That's the greatest meat aroma I've ever smelled. On the floor, yeah. Yeah. Too hot, right here. Will it, will it burn the? It's too hot. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mega Menangigo. Hello. 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 So, gentlemen, mission accomplished. Okay, that will be the.
Okay, we're back in the kitchen now. They're actually, they have a whole group that's eating here, so they're preparing a lot of food for today. That is a basin of tabbouleh. Oh, I love tabbouleh. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Taste of the yes. fatouche. <laughs> I don't know if you like it. Mm. It's it's really it's oh, lovely. Wow. Really, really. Hello, it one is more, so one more. good. One more. Okay. Mm. Okay. Fadi, I'll give you Okay. Dude. Okay, that's the greatest fatouche I've ever tasted. It's unbelievable. You could drink that dressing. Yes, yes, you can do it. You can do it. We do it usually for the tabbouleh. Yeah. I I drink the camel yalla. One of the best I've had. So. Yeah. You know, the best mm. ever had. So then, Kibbe Naya is, is the meze course, but then the cook one is the next yes, course. Yes. I'm learning many things about Kibbe today. Um, I mean, the different versions, but also the different courses of Lebanese cuisine and the way it's served. So, meze comes first, which are the cold, well, especially the cold appetizer mezes, like the hummus, the baba ganoush, the just the vegetable platters and the first kibbe is served with that course because it's cold appetizer the raw kibbe the raw meat the raw minced meat uh, the other like cooked kibbes the heavier meats the that ball and that platter kibbe they'll come later after we sit and relax and eat the mezes you know what some people do mark that's a local touch they say it goes very nicely with our sorry i'm using my fingers but this is how it's done the family is the only way just came out of the kitchen now and at restaurants outside of Lebanon really the only form of kibbeh that I've ever had actually the only form of kibbeh is those little football shaped bite sized little dumpling like fried that's the fried kibbeh Kemal what's the name of the fried kibbeh? It's just we call it kibbeh plain so whenever you say kibbeh that's just kibbeh oh, the balls kibbe, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Ones. and the local way to eat this one is to kind of break it in half oh you can see the minced meat in there the bulgar wheat and then also the the pine nuts in there um, and then dip it in the hummus or other dip oh i just lost my my pine nuts okay i'll pick i'll add one to this side one to this side but i'm gonna taste one half of it just plain first <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> that's the best I've ever had. The meat is so incredibly fragrant and you taste like the nuttiness, the kind of slight cinnamon allspice, that is incredible. So then the other way is to dip it in the, the hummus. That is a, another delicious vessel for hummus. So I'm gonna give you another. Oh, with the raw, okay. I'm gonna give you another. Perfect bite, some tabbouleh juice. Juice to rejoice. Yeah, do it, do it. Oof. The kibbeh rejuiced with the tabbouleh. Okay, yeah, that makes it. Because of that citrus, because of that lemon. Yeah, that's, that's the best combination for sure. Mm. <laughs> what is the best technique? The best technique is to make like a vessel for oil so, so that it holds it in. Holds it in. So that with every bite you can dip it in the olive oil. The camel made me almost like a donut shape so that it can, you can fill it all the way up with olive oil. That way you get some of the raw meat, some of the olive oil all in one bite and then often you can also eat it with garlic but you really want to taste you really want to taste the flavor of that raw meat. Oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers. It's almost like so fine and like so neutral tasting that it's almost like cheesy. And then like the, the texture is almost like gummy 
sticky because it's such a fine mince because it's mixed with that bulgar because it's, there's olive oil. Stunningly delicious. And for this bite, I'll scoot over some of that garlic, some of that garlic sauce in with the meat and use the, the baked bread. Wow. Wow, well, with the garlic, immediately you feel a slight burn in your 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 cheeks, your tongue from the powerfulness of that garlic. That kibbeh just melts in your mouth. Okay, I'm moving into that tabbouleh that we saw her make. This tabbouleh looks incredible. Yeah, tabbouleh is just one of the greatest salads, greatest mixes greatest dishes. I mean, the simplicity of it, and then the herbaceousness of the parsley. It's one of the kibbehs that I just cannot wait to try. This was the one that we went to the baker to cook the entire tray of meat, and when it's in the oven, in that scorching hot oven, it just, I mean, it cooks in its own juices, but it also like deep fries in its own juices from all of that oil, olive oil. And then they also say it's very good to dip in the tabbouleh, to eat with the tabbouleh, the lemon juices, the, the olive oil as well. The crispy layers, you can almost see the bulgar wheat in there too with the meat. It's meat. You can actually see that texture. Oh yeah. It's one of those things as you keep on chewing, the flavor keeps on coming, the more meatiness it comes out. And it's got this like crunchy, this crumbly, actually crumbly texture from that bulgar. It's so flavorful. But it actually like takes time to chew it before all the flavors are released. Like it's almost like you're eating bread, like a meat bread. It's amazing. Heaven. Heaven. Uh, it's so good that I couldn't even wait to change my plate. So I just got the rest of a whole entire kibbeh. Andy is having some garlic with a bit of kibbeh. <laughs> yeah. Another excuse to eat garlic. The pita bread that we have, Mark, uh, they spread chili paste first, a bit of tomatoes and onions. And then you use it to eat uh, the grilled meat, the grilled kafta. Whoa, they have cranked up the music over on that side. But um, we're going to the kitchen now to grill the ball of kibbeh. But in the meantime, they brought out a whole mixed grill plate. I gotta have a piece of, I gotta snack on a piece of kafta on the way to the kitchen. Oh, 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 oh wow, oh that cup is amazing, the parsley in there, okay, I need another piece of meat, that cup is amazing, with hummus, oh thank you, so that cup is insane, yeah, that cup is amazing, it is, absolutely, one of the best cup ever. The ball kibbehs are on the grill. I thought there was just one. There's like, there's like eight of them, ten of them on the grill, slow grilling. You can see, you can hear the like, the, like crackling of the wheat of the meat on the grill. They're like the size of grapefruits. Grapefruits. They're the size of grapefruits. They're the size of softballs. Not just put on one side and then flip. Like the it's whole. Just slowly rotate it. This could almost be considered a sport, rolling the kibbeh balls. And they just, like, they just slow roast. They have to roast on every side, so they just slowly rotate them over yeah. the hot fire. You can see the juices starting to drip out. <laughs> I'm taking care of the kibbe, don't <laughs> I got it under control. Yeah. Only if everyone can smell what I'm smelling now. Oh wow. 
the trophy has arrived. Oh. King of the table. Yeah, I, I, what I like to do is to remove the fat from the inside. Oops. It's, it's still a little, bit, a little bit hot, so... Oh, it is hot. It's very hot. Sorry. <laughs> this is the Julie way. Julie. Okay, yeah. it's open, and she's Julie. from here. She's, she's from a local. Ah, she knows so oh. <laughs> it's like a coconut. <laughs> it's like opening a coconut. You want a drink? <laughs> I like to remove it. I remove it in the water so that it doesn't ruin the... I mean, for me, it's done its purpose, right? But Surf I keep it. it like this, huh? And that's just sloshing around fat. That is a beautiful thing. Um, and actually, a lot of people like to throw that fat because the fat served its purpose. It coated the inside of that kibbit. Um, but other people like to eat that fat. And then they're explaining the different ways. Some people like to then dip pieces of the kibbit into the fat. Other people like to empty the fat, the oil, and then put uh, tabule on the inside. I think yeah. you can't get I enough get of just like watch it. Mark, I'll have the fat. Have the fat. You it's a bully uh, inside. Bully on the no, and you can eat it like this. Oh, like a sandwich. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it is time. This is like a, a once in a life food opportunity. Oh, it's just a perfect like softball. And I'm just gonna cut. Oh, like it's it's amazingly like hard because like bready because of that bulgar, you know, like yeah, it's like it's thick, it's hard. I'm gonna slice all the way through. And here it is. <laughs> Just a puddle. A puddle of, of fat. And immediately you get that aroma. The, the meat aroma plus that spice. I'm gonna do this method first. Take a piece of the, the kibbe. Oh yeah, and that's like bready because of the content of the, the the bulgar in there. I'm gonna just dip that, try to get as much of the oil juices as possible. When you're gonna eat fat, you gotta make it count. Oh wow. That's the bite. That is the bite of the meal. That is extraordinary. Solid already. A bite with tabbouleh with the fat. Cheers! <laughs> Fat dripping everywhere. Fat is oh yeah, I'm, it's yeah. juicing, it's juicing. Yes. When you eat the fat, it just like coats your lips in like a meat glaze on your lips. Meat lipstick. I've got the meat lipstick. I love super dripping I love Lebanese dessert to finish as well always platters of fresh fruit and I love cherry season in Lebanon. I mean, fruit is all you need after a meal of such glory, after a meal like that. Again, like I mentioned before, before today actually, the only kibbe that I even knew were those little fried football shaped uh, kibbehs, which are incredibly delicious as well, but just to to learn about this entire experience and how there's so many different types as she was explaining to us that there's over 10 types even more just from this village alone. It's really like one of the most respected, one of the most like family bringing together dishes of Lebanon. I want to say a massive thank you to Julia and her restaurant, her family. This is still a family run restaurant and how they prepared everything showed us uh, their culture through Kibbe. It was an amazing experience. Huge thank you. Thank you to Camel for arranging for uh, setting it up. I also want to say a huge thank you to USAID USAID for funding my trip to Lebanon, uh, for bringing me to Lebanon, and for sponsoring our trip. Also, if you haven't watched all the Lebanese food videos in this series, we're traveling around Lebanon, eating, meeting amazing people, learning about Lebanon and its food and culture and people, uh, and I'll leave the link in the description box below that you can watch the entire playlist, all the videos. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe, uh, subscribe now and also click the little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next video.